So at the heart of most statistical research is the concept of variability or variation. Uh, and it, at its heart, it's just simply that things are different. And then we ask questions about how much are they different or why are they different? Or at the beginning, are they even different? And there are many mathematical ways of looking at this, but the concepts themselves um, go below the mathematics. So let me just give you a couple visual examples of what we mean when we are, we're talking about variation. So I asked my two daughters to draw some pictures of dogs here. Um, on the left, you'll see Katie, my six-year-old's drawing of dogs, and on the right are Ellie's drawings of dogs. There's two types of variation I want to point out here. The first is um, between group variation. So in other words, Katie's dog drawings in general have some distinctive qualities that are different than Ellie's dog drawings. So that, that variation between the groups um, is often called good variation or signal. It's what we're usually looking for when we conduct statistical tests. However, it gets a little tricky when we have what's called the noise or the within group variation. So even within Katie's drawings of dogs, there's a lot of variation. Some are small, some are large, or one is very large. Uh, some have certain accessories, different colors. Uh, just like in Ellie's, Ellie's also has a lot of within group variation. So the more within group variation there is, the more difficult it can be to see between group variation. Uh, another couple examples. Another couple examples. So we have two groups of markers here. Um, think to yourself the within group uh, variation here. Would it be high or low in each group? What well, would end up being pretty low if we're measuring the color that is, because these two reds should give me about the same color, whereas these four blacks should also give me about the same color. Um, the between group variation, however, would be pretty strong. The color produced by these markers would be quite a bit different than the color produced by these markers. If statistics and research uh, were as cut and dry as the variation there with the markers, things would just be popping out in terms of medical research, economics research, psychology research. Um, we would be able to advance the field very, very quickly. Unfortunately, that's not how the world works. Um, there's often very high within group variation that makes it hard to see the differences that exist between the groups. Let me give you a couple real examples. One would be the gender pay gap. So or biological sex, male and female, and how much they get paid on average for, for doing the same jobs. So because we have a lot of between group vari variation, in other words, within the male group, there's a wide range of incomes of salaries. And within the female group, there's a wide range of incomes and salaries. It makes it a little trickier to see if there's a difference uh, in general between the two groups. And, and then we add to factors like level of experience, um, particular skills that, that one has, the job that they're doing. Uh, it, it, gets, it gets much cloudier and cloudier. Now, because this has been a well-studied phenomenon, we do know that there is um, a strong gender pay gap, um, even after controlling for all of those, those things. But it was harder to get at because of the amount of within-group variation. Now, the stronger the, the between-group variation is, the easier it is to see the difference, uh, even if you do have quite a bit of, of within-group variation. Uh, let me give you another example. So coronavirus vaccine testing, you have groups um, that are unvaccinated or a group, let's say a group that's unvaccinated and a group that may have received a particular vaccine. Um, if, if the within group variation uh, was very small, it would be easy to see any differences in outcomes between these two groups. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Within the group that's unvaccinated, uh, there's a large range of, um, 
a variety of outcomes for people getting infected with COVID-19. Uh, some will hardly react at all, have any symptoms. Uh, others will have very strong reactions or, or maybe not even survive. Uh, and, and within the vaccinated group, vaccinated group um, you're going to get probably a range also. The more range there is, the more of this noise there is, the harder it is to see what the signal it is. In other words, is there a difference between the two groups? And if so, how large is that difference? The, the between group variance is often called the effect size. How big of a difference on average is there between the two groups? So we're gonna get into a couple of these things this week with, with variation. Um, there will be some calculations with standard deviation. I, I would encourage you not to focus too much on those. Um, let the Google Sheets formula do that for you. Spend your time and energy thinking about the variation and the concepts in general, how they're playing out, uh, because those are really what you would need to do uh, on a day-to-day -day basis or in order to understand research, much more so than dissecting the, the formulas piece by piece.